우리 이제 당장 우리 애들이 이제 걱정이죠. 저도 순이가 오게 되면은 시험 부분에서 좀더 강화됐으면 좋겠고요. 그렇게 그렇게 사람의 탈을 쓰고 그런 행동을 했을까 그 사람이 또 살아서 다 온다는 그 자체만으로도 안산 시민이 치를 떨고 있어요. 출소 안 했으면 좋겠어요. 나영 was only eight years old, a first grader at an elementary school in Ansan, South Korea. On her way to school, she was kidnapped by a 57-year-old drunk man, Cho Do Sun. He dragged Nayong to a church bathroom nearby, knocked her unconscious when she tried to escape. Cho raped and bit her in many awful ways and left the scene. Due to the incident, Nayong had injuries to 80% of her internal organs and lower abdomen and became permanently disabled. She had to go through eight months of treatment and a surgery to implement an artificial anus. What happened to the rapist? Cho Do Sun, the pedophile, was sentenced to 12 years in prison and is to be released on December 13th, which is in less than two months. Cho is returning home. After 12 years, the case is still remembered as brutal rape, not only here in Ansan City, but also in South Korea. The so-called Cho Do Sun case, named after the child rapist. The 2013 film Hoop is based on this case. The notorious pedophile has now turned into a 69-year-old grandfather, and the 8-year-old victim is now a college student. This is one of the few pictures of Cho Do Sun revealed in a TV program. The picture right next to it is assumed to be his current photo. For 11 years, Cho's personal information has not been disclosed to public due to portrait rights. The rape occurred at a church's bathroom in a multi-complex building like this. This is not the exact place. The church has now disappeared and this is ironic because Joe was once a preacher. The victim crawled out of the bathroom and shut it for help. And this was not Joe's first crime, which we can't call a mistake. Back in 1983, at age 31, he followed a 19-year-old woman, beat and raped her at a motel nearby. Chu was sentenced to three years in prison for this, while the victim needed 30 days of treatment to recover. Following that, in 1995, he assaulted a man in his 60s to death while drinking after he made a political statement. Chu only got two years in prison for killing a person because he was deemed feeble-minded. Then in 2008, for notorious Nayon case, Cho was originally sentenced to life in prison. However, after young victim Nayon testified that Cho smelled like alcohol, his sentence was reduced to 12 years. Even to that, Cho made an appeal but ended up with the term. After being released from prison, Joe will be walking around this town with electronic ankle bracelet that tracks his location real time. Joe's personal information, including where he lives and his photos, will be disclosed to the public through the sexual offender notification website. Concerns are growing over his imminent release, with public anger and fear still lingering over him. Some 그런 분위기가 있더라고 좀 걱정하는 분위기가 많이 있더라고. 저도 뭐 애를 갖고 있는 입장에서는 다시 또 그런 범죄를 일으킬 수도 있는 사람이기 때문에 그 공간에서 같이 있다는 자체 되게 불안하죠. 뭐, 뭐 발찌를 채워준다고 하는데 그 발찌는 무용지물이라며 끊을 수도 있다며 그럼 끊고 나면 그 사람은 또 어디 가서 뭔 짓을 할지 어떻게 알아? In fact, in 2017, about 615,000 citizens signed petitions on the website of the Blue House opposing his release. However, according to the double jeopardy rule, it is impossible to keep him in prison for life completely isolated from the world. With the release of Cho Do which is less than two months away, South Korea's Democratic Party representative Lee Na Gyun said, after create and implement a legal device to reliably block violent offenders such as pedophiles and eradicate child rape crimes. Many people have pointed out that the initial sentence for Joe was far too lenient. Thus, in 2013, the Special Act on Sexual Violence was revised, banning the reduction of sentence for offenders in a state of mental or physical disorder due to drug or alcohol.
Then in 2019, the so-called Chudisin Act has been established, allowing one-on-one -on -one exclusive monitoring on sexual offenders upon their release from prison. As if 12 years were enough to reset everything, the offender is to return to the neighborhood where the victim still lives in. The awfully terrible rape case in South Korea. The day that shouldn't be remembered by the victim and the day that shouldn't be forgotten by the offender.